All right, and welcome to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. This time around, we're going to be looking at a different type of filter that we have not looked at, at least not exactly, uh, in the past. Uh, if we look here in the center somewhere, uh, we have the A124 WASP filter. Um, it looks a little bit similar to some of the other filters that we've looked at in the past, but uh, here in a second, we'll talk about what makes this one unique, and then a little later, we'll hear what makes it sound unique. Um, so to start out with, let's talk about what kind of filter it is. Uh, it is a 12 decibel filter, um, but it uses a very special circuit that was found in the EDP Wasp, that is a black and yellow synthesizer, back from the 70s, if you're not familiar with that. Uh, I do recommend going out there and trying to find it. Uh, I'm sure there are some YouTube videos on that. Uh, at any rate, this filter is known for its colorful distortion and uh, also other very gritty effects. Uh, if we look at the front face, there's not really that much to look at up here in the WASP filter, at least compared to some of the other modules we've seen. Um, so what we'll talk about here is just basic functions of the ports here. Uh, it does have a couple of things here. Uh, it has a bandpass out, uh, which is very similar to what we looked at before in the A121. But uh, later on, we'll hear a little bit how that sounds different to it. Um, in addition to the bandpass out, there's also one other output down here at the bottom that's labeled low pass, high pass out. Um, and this can be adjusted depending on your taste. Uh, at the very far counterclockwise position, you have a full low pass. And then all the way on the clockwise position, you have a full high pass. Uh, in the middle, you have kind of a notch filter. And then anywhere in between those two, like right there, let's say for instance, you have more of a low pass than you do a high pass. And if you're over here, then you have more of a high pass than you do a low pass. So it kind of helps you adjust the ratio of the two filters together. Um, somewhat similar to some of the other filters we've looked at, but uh, in a moment you'll hear how this one is very, very different from the others. Um, at any rate, that's a little discussion about the mix knob. Uh, one thing that's very unique about this filter is that it has no self-oscillation, which is very different from some of the other filters that we've run into, um, such as the multi-mode filter over here uh, with a one volt per octave input um, at the filter cutoff or frequency right there, um, as well as some of the other Dofer filters. Uh, but that actually leads... Uh, in its advantage, because uh, when you start listening to it, you get some very nice distortions. Uh, so it'll distort before it actually oscillates, which is kind of nice. Uh, now, on the A100 page, uh, the do-it-yourself page, that is, there is a document that outlines how you can modify the A124 WASP filter for self-oscillation if you solder an additional resistor in there. Uh, so I'll leave that that are, uh, for those of you out there that are handy with some soldering tools, I will leave that page for you to discover out there. Um, I, of course, want to say, just straight out, uh, be sure that you do all your research, read the manuals, and, of course, take all the necessary precautions if you do decide to attempt this modification. Um, at any rate, that's my little bit about that. Uh, Basic functions of our filter here, uh, it's not going to be very different than some of the others that we've looked at in the past. We have a basic audio input at the very top. Uh, this is our attenuator, so all the way down at the bottom, no filter will go in, or no sound will go into the filter. And then all the way at the top, you get maximum amount of audio input going into the filter. Uh, this one is a little bit different, at least in my test so far. Uh, this uh, level dial is actually a little more, I don't want to say sensitive, but um, you have to play with this one a little bit more to get a more controlled uh, distortion and effect. And we'll hear that in a little bit. Immediately below that, we have where we adjust the cutoff to the filter. Uh, and then, so that's basic all the way on the left, it's closed. All the way at the top, it's open. Uh, and that will affect any of the filters that you're adjusting. So if you're adjusting the high pass or low pass, uh, or even the bandpass for that matter, then this is going to help you adjust that. To the left of that, you have a control voltage input. 
And then immediately below that, you have another control voltage input, this one with an attenuator. So if you feed, let's say, an LFO into here, you can adjust how much of that is going to affect the cutoff. And of course, standard Dofer convention, as we all know, if we've been watching for a while, uh, if you add, if you have two things plugged in here at the same time, then those two inputs are going to be summed, and then that uh, combination CV is then going to be fed to that parameter, which in this case is the frequency cutoff. Right below that, we have the bandpass out, as we mentioned a little earlier. And then to the right of that, we have the resonance control. So you can bring this all the way up, and no self-oscillation will occur, but we'll hear some very colorful effects of that here shortly. And then immediately, immediately below that, we have the, uh, the mix control. Um, and that is the aforementioned stuff that we talked about earlier. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right in to the demonstration portion of our segment here. Uh, we'll be listening a little bit to some of the basics of this filter, uh, low pass, high pass, uh, notch, and of course, band. So um, let's go ahead and get started with that. And please stay tuned. <laughs> 